Hello to everybody, my name is Gerard Encina Llamas and I am a researcher at the Copenhagen Hearing and Balance Center in Denmark, where I've been living for quite some years. But recently I came back to Catalonia, close to Barcelona, because we started the first ever bachelor degree in general audiology in Catalonia. And in Spain, you can see here our lab facilities and we would like to connect with as many of you as possible since we are a new university uh, teaching uh, audiology. I would like to talk today some preliminary work we are doing at CHBC about auditory phenotypes. And this uh, idea of trying to understand the complexity of hearing impairment is not new. And mainly researchers have taken two different approaches. One, starting from the cochlear pathology, for example, uh, work from Schuchner, uh, starting from uh, examples of human temporal bones and try to relate the pathology to audiometric thresholds, or work from uh, Judy Dabner and colleagues where they started from an animal model, mainly the gerbil, and then they relate uh, the pathology to uh, thresholds and then they found similar thresholds in humans. Another approach is to look at the audiogram itself, uh, looking at large data sets of, of audiograms. For example, the work from Al Allen and Edis, where they did a principal component analysis on about 1,000 audiograms. All the standard audiograms by Nikolai Bisco, based uh, on a classification of about 30,000 audiograms. All the most recent work from Aravind Pathasarati using uh, Gaussian mixture models to find clusters in a very large data set from Massa and Eos. What all these uh, studies have in common is that the test they are looking at, the only test they are looking at is audiometric thresholds. And we know that there is damage beyond audiogram. In order to compensate for this limitation, some colleagues of mine, and particularly my friend uh, Raul Sanchez Lopez, uh, did uh, uh, did the Bear project, the Better Hearing Rehabilitation project in Denmark, uh, where they measure many tests, also audiometry, but also loudness perception, speech in noise, speech in quiet, binaural cues, spectrotemporal modulation, and many others. And they did the data-driven profiling of this data set based on archetypal analysis, and they found four profiles that were taken into account aud audiometric thresholds, uh, but also supra threshold uh, processing. Probably the limitation of this work is, was that given the large amount of tests that they had to measure, the number of, of participants of patients was not huge. So the whole analysis is based on 75 uh, patients. What we are doing in the Alphen DK project is something in, in between. We want to go beyond audiometry, uh, including more tests than audiometric thresholds, but still looking at a very large uh, clinical data set. This is a project funded by the GN Foundation, looking at the clinical data set from his hospital. So we have a large group of patients that were collected in the hospital from 1995 to 2022. We have a bit more than 96,000. Uh, patients, 84,000 of them are adults, which is the group we are looking at, and we have a bit less than 300,000 audiometries. And for all patients, for any patient, we have pure tone audiometry, but not only that, we also have a speech audiometry mainly in quiet, but also some of them in noise and acoustic reflex thresholds. When we look at the proportion of people by age, we, we have mainly older people as it's, it's normal, but we also have a significant amount of younger individuals. The idea is to represent all this cohort of, of patients in a, in a map so that uh, we can identify phenotypes. And, and then the idea is that a new individual patient can come and we can assign it later on to one of the, of the groups. What we've done so far is to start organizing and wrangling the data. And as an example, we can show mean audiograms per uh, group, uh, per age group. And we can see this, uh, what we know, this uh, correlation between age and, and PTA. We have started uh, visualizing the data, for example, through a principal component analysis. And when we do that, we can see that the two main components uh, can account for about 90% of the variance of the data. Now we can color code all these data points uh, by age or by age group. And we can see that the younger people are placed in the, in the leftmost part of the plot. And then as we move to the right, all the people appear. What we can do now is to project in this space uh, known audiometric shapes, like for example, flat audiograms starting at minus 10 
and then uh, going down up to 120. And when we do that, they are placed in this horizontal line from, from the left vertex to the right. Uh, so moving the first uh, component to the right is going down in the audiogram, like representing the mean of the audiogram, the PTA. What we can do now is to also project other audiometric shapes from previous phenotypes. So for example, the standard audiogram by Nikolai Pisco, and we can see that they also go from left to right, but they are placed a little bit farther north because those audiograms have uh, a bit more uh, high frequency uh, hearing loss. And this is more clear when I project the steep sloping audiogram that they are placed farther north. So the second component is indicating whether the audiogram is uh, sloping towards the right, towards the high frequency, or uh, if it goes to the south, uh, it means that the audiogram is sloping towards the uh, low frequencies. Now we can uh, color code each of the individual uh, uh, data points that, that are assigned to one of these uh, a standard audiogram and we can see that even though um, like uh, the, the whole space is a continuum space we can define uh, groups or clusters of, of patients. We can do the same with uh, Davnos phenotypes and this is what we get and this is interesting because if you remember the younger people were uh, placed on the on the left uh, in the in the PCA uh, plot uh, and, and this is the space that is occupied by, by Dubnos phenotypes, and those phenotypes were assigned to uh, presbyacusis, so age-related hearing impairment. So this is uh, an interesting uh, point. We have many unclassified data points, about 70% of the data is unclassified, so there is room for finding other types of, of phenotypes. Now what we've started to do is also using other algorithms like the, the UMAP, and when we do that with BISCO uh, phenotypes, we get these uh, other types of shapes. Uh, we are looking to more complex uh, data reduction algorithms because we think that the, when we are adding complexity to the data, adding other tests, maybe it's good to exploit global but also local uh, structures in the data. Now the idea is to, when we will have a, a map of, uh, of a hearing impairment, we can trace trajectories. So we have patients that have been coming to the clinics for many, many years. So we can assign each of the visits to one uh, phenotype that we may find and then trace uh, how this patient, how the impairment of this patient uh, evolve over time. So we, we can even, uh, maybe we find some main trajectories going in one direction or another, or another one, depending on the group of patients. And maybe we can even um, assign or, or, or define some, some times, uh, some timing in the progression uh, of the impairment. So this is the idea. And we think this could be uh, a, a good tool first to, to indicate an individual patient where he or she is and where he or she is going, uh, but also as an objective method to uh, test um, or to evaluate possible treatment. So maybe uh, a, a particular uh, hearing aid or some other treatment uh, produces a change in this trajectory. So this is what we, what we would like to do in, in the future. With this, I finish. I would like to thank uh, my colleagues, Abby and Eric, the GN Foundation for the support and all of you for listening. Thank you very much.